2023 has officially wrapped and it's that time of year again to go over the 15 best films of 2023 now obviously there are some rules here and the most obvious rule is that if i didn't see it it can't be on the list so if you're expecting oppenheimer to be on the list like it is for everybody else didn't see it so it's not going to be here and also the, i didn't i don't do any kind of like um metrics i guess is the word you'd use to determine what everybody else thought was the top 10 or top 15 this is 100 my opinion so if you don't like it that's your problem not mine so, a few honorable mentions, and only three, This usually I try to get it to five, I only got three because this was kind of a shitty year, and all of them came out of Warner Brothers, ironically. Shazam! Fury of the Gods is a perfectly fun movie, but brought down by a crappy story, some really boring villains, and a lot of bad CGI. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, same problems, dumb story, bad villain, and mediocre CGI. Wonka actually had a surprisingly fun time with this movie but it did have issues and mo its biggest issue was being connected to a movie i fucking hate so with that out of the way let's get to the top 15 films of 2023 a sequel i definitely did not ask for but had a pretty good time with yes it's kind of a ripoff of maze runner the death cure but the characters are still entertaining the jokes were perfectly fine even if even the ones that weren't funny and even though i didn't really like that they brought the villain from the first movie back the plot itself is perfectly fine i like them trying to break into the factory to get their daughter back the entire movie is the equivalent of a movie I didn't ask for, but a movie I'm okay with existing. Just don't make a third movie. Multiverse movies are starting to get on my nerves, but this was definitely the best one of the three that came out this year. I like how it adapts the biblical story, The Job, but makes enough changes to make it a modern retelling. The characters are mostly likable, and Neil, Neil McDonald is definitely the highlight, not just in his acting, but he gets some of the best dialogue in the movie, really making you understand just how good of a man manipulator the devil can be. People look at the devil and say, oh, how did anybody fall? for that well people said the same thing about the nazis and yet they're falling they keep falling for the same shit over and over so it really makes sense and again the characters like well the acting's good and their multiverse i wish they had done a bit more with it but this was definitely the best multiverse movie of the year that's not saying much but it's true had I been doing top 15 for 2021, the first movie probably or definitely would have made that list since it made the honorable mention for the top 10. This one probably isn't as good as the first movie, but it's still a fun time. I like most of the characters. They use, they're very creative with how they use their superpowers. And I like that these movies have villains that are just plain evil. They don't need to have understandable motivations, or well, they try to do that, but even the movie knows that that's stupid to do, and they just don't bother. The problem is, my only problem with this is that Sky's story about her being the smallest pups or feeling useless is not very well defined, wasn't brought up in the first movie, and it's just here to generate conflict, including making some stupid decisions, but this is definitely, this shows the argument that it's made for, that being shitty because it's made for kids is not a good enough argument. I'm looking at you, Percy Jackson Defenders. I saw this for the first time literally two days ago, and that's why it never got a review, because I just never got around to seeing it in the theaters. If you want me to do a full review, let me know, and I will. But in a nutshell, I don't like horror movies, but this one was definitely a good time. I like how they adapted the lore from the first two games, with some elements of the third one in there. Although the twists at the end were very obvious, I didn't mind the villain. The acting is all okay that's not the greatest acting but it's all passable enough i like the animatronics they look very creepy and i like that they didn't resort to shitty cgi it can be pretty tense there were a couple jump scares that were kind of funny but overall this was definitely a decent horror film a movie based on one chapter of a novel sounds like a terrible idea but somehow the filmmakers of this movie pulled it off I'm actually very impressed. This is another horror flick, but I would prefer to call this more of a thriller than a actual horror film. The kills are pretty enjoyable. I like how Dracula looks. He looks like that, although it's his back turns so like you can't really see it. His design is really cool, and I like how they were able 
to tell the story without it feeling dragged out. The pacing of this movie was probably the most surprisingly we well done thing in this movie. The acting's all great, the characters are likable, and none of them make abhorrent stupid decisions except for one time, but I mentioned that in the review. So again, this was a surprisingly good time out of something that definitely should not have worked. Despite Michael Bay's best attempt to destroy this franchise for a decade, the franchise did bounce back with Bumblebee back in 2018, and this is a pretty good follow-up. Do I think it's as good as Bumblebee? I don't think so, but it's still pretty good. The human characters are way less annoying than the Bay films. The action is a lot better is a lot better and a lot easier to see than the Bay films. Pretty much everything is better than the Bay films, let's just put it that way. But the human characters are at least somewhat likable, even if they, even if one of them does get a little annoying. And while I don't particularly care for Pete Davidson's presence in this movie, and that goes ditto for Ron Perlman, the voice acting for all the robots is pretty good, and I like the story because it focuses on the robots, not the dumbass humans. Thank God this franchise gave Bay the boot. I don't care if other people don't like this movie, I fucking did. Yes, I get that the comedy wasn't great, and especially compared to the first two movies, and Lacking Luis definitely hurt. There are some great jokes you could have gotten out of that. But the effects look really good, the landscapes are all fantastic, the characters are likable, the cameo by Bill Murray was great, and the villain is extremely compelling. This was setting up something that is possibly dead now, but that doesn't detract from the overall experience of seeing this movie. Because, again... This is one of the Marvel movies that got overhated because it was an easy target. I'm getting sick of seeing that. Yes, the Marvels wasn't very good and deserved to hate, but this movie did not. While the first movie was good, but nothing special outside of the action, this movie took every good aspect of that film and amped it up to another level while ditching a lot of the bad aspects that I didn't really care for. The plot's more interesting here, the action sequences are amped up to 11, especially the fight in the really tall building, I don't remember where they're at, but that action sequence looked fantastic, the story was more compelling like I said, and the character of Tyler Rake was a bit more interesting this time around, seeing how he tries to recover after after basically being dead, and I like that he didn't just shrug off being killed, he spent months and months recuperating and bringing himself back to form. I am really curious what they're going to do with the third film, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I had to wait three months to see this movie, and it was definitely worth the wait. Now, this movie is obviously nothing original. We've seen demons and stuff, and aliens and everything possessing humans before, but surprisingly, the strongest aspect of this movie was not originality or something, it was the dialogue. Almost all of this movie is just dialogue between this guy who's possessed, and well, it's really the demon talking, and this psychiatrist who's trying to determine whether or not he's actually possessed by a demon or if he's just a crazy lunatic. So, and I like that it, I would have liked if it was a bit more ambiguous instead of just outright telling us, oh yeah, it's a demon, but considering it is a Christian film, I guess I probably should have seen that coming. But again, the script is the strongest aspect of this movie, and it really drove home its me message and didn't feel too hammered in until maybe the last couple minutes. I definitely recommend seeing this. Would you look at that? A good, another good video game movie. Take note, Sony. So, yeah, much like Five Nights at Freddy's, Super Mario Bros. did the thing you're supposed to do with video game adaptations, where you adapt the lore, but don't try to do it beat for beat, and actually make it your own thing. That's what I like in adaptations, and it's really the only way you can adapt a video game. You don't change too much, but you don't change too little. With a book, you can change how, or with a TV show, whatever, you can change as much as you want or leave as much as you want the same, but with video games, you have to find the middle ground, and this movie did. It was entertaining, the animation looked fantastic, the voice acting was fun, despite everybody making fun of the casting choices originally, they all do a phenomenal job, and I'm very much looking forward to the sequel. If you saw my ranking of the Dungeons & Dragons films, you know I thought the first three were pretty damn bad. The second one was the least offensive, but it doesn't change the fact that that movie was still incredibly boring and on a cheap-ass sci-fi movie original budget. This one, while the CGI looked like garbage, 
everything else just seemed to work. The script was hilarious and heartfelt at the same time. The acting's all great, the action sequences are very creative and a lot of fun. And this is one of the few times where I actually like a heist movie, because heist movies are kind of getting played out, and even Wonka kind of turned into one near the end. But this one just does it so expertly. And one of my favorite things in this movie was how well it was edited. I praised it in the hype periods, and it was definitely a high point for this one. Too bad it's probably not going to get a sequel, because this flopped at the box office. For as much as the left claims they want to celebrate inclusion and diversity and all that other shit, they sure seem to have a heart attack when this movie did it right. Probably because they did it without pandering. This is how you do something like this right. Guy Ritchie is an incredibly talented director, even if his track record is uh, hit and miss, to say the least. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is a fantastic lead, and I like the story, uh, and I like just the basic idea of the Covenant of going back. It's just a simple plot of going back for somebody who saved your life in the first place, but it's done so well that it definitely deserved a top five spot on this list. The comedy that the liberals did not want you to see. Too bad, I saw it anyway. <laughs> The Daily Wire has a pretty good track record with their movies. They had three movies last year, and I gave every single one a positive review. And again, not for political reasons, it's because the movies were actually well made. And this movie is too, for one specific reason. It's making fun of political correctness. Because political correctness nowadays basically means trying your damnedest to not offend anybody, in which case, it's not funny. This movie is no holds barred, and no fucks given, and I love it for that. I know. I'm surprised it didn't take the top spot either. Much like last year, the MCU movie that I was sure was going to take the top spot ended up in second. Actually, I, actually, I redact that because I thought Quantumania was going to take the top spot before the year started, but after both movies came out, I assumed this would take the top spot. However, you can clearly tell it didn't, but that doesn't mean that this movie isn't good. Hell, hell, it's the second best movie of the year. The characters are still their same fun selves from the first two. The action's still great. It's still hilarious as hell. And I would probably say, which is pretty high praise, might I add, that this is probably the second best of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, just edging out the second movie for second place. But again, shockingly, it didn't take the top spot. Oh, come on, you had to know it was gonna be Sound of Freedom, a movie that pissed off the pedophile left because it was exposing a pedophile ring. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. This movie is not, and I don't just put these movies high because of the politics, because, again, if you're even if I agree with your politics or it's not woke or anything, doesn't make it good. Again, I had somebody bitch about me complaining about Rebel Moon, because it's not woke, you should have liked this. Doesn't mean it was a good movie. But this movie is incredibly well-crafted, based on an incredible true story that I didn't even know about, and I saw for the first time with this movie, and encouraged me to do more research. I had a, well, I wouldn't say I had a lot of fun with this movie, but you're not supposed to have fun with this movie. But it is an incredibly important movie that everybody needs to see. Well, there you have it, the 15 best movies of 2023, and next time, we will get to the worst. And trust me when I say I will have a lot more to talk about with those movies, because there were a lot more that bad movies than good this year. So, that's all I got. Leave your list, or even just your, be even just your favorite movie of the year, down in the comments below, and I will see you all next time. Bye.